At long last, the James Webb Space Telescope has been launched. It's been a long time coming, but after almost three decades of development, NASA's most ambitious and most complex project finally takes center stage. As a joint project of NASA, the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency, the JWST is the largest telescope ever built. Not only is it a telescope, but in a sense, it also doubles as a time machine, allowing us to peer into the past of the universe and shed light on some of the most exciting mysteries the infinite expanse has to offer. Now, with the JWST officially launched, the universe is at our fingertips, and the next wave of space exploration can finally begin. The Road to Space We all know that the launch of the JWST is coming late. If it had been launched on time, its mission would have been over by now. That's how many delays this monstrosity of a project has faced. That's right, since its development began in 1996, the JWST has faced delays not once, but six different times. Initially, it was meant to launch in 2007, but due to a number of budgeting problems and technical redesigns, it has faced delays of a couple months all the way up to a couple years. Considering the lifespan of the JWST is only 10 years, and that's if they stretch out its power supply. If it launched in 2007, that would mean that the telescope would have been dead for four years by now. Instead, it's only just begun. Now, that could be a good thing or a bad thing, considering the advances in technology in the past couple of decades. Although that's neither here or there, all that matters now is that it's finally been launched. Costing a whopping $10 billion, this telescope is the most expensive endeavor NASA and its allies have ever partaken in. So, what's going to happen now? Launch Day Nearly three decades of planning have led up to this moment. December 22, 2021 is a day that will go down in the record books as another delay in the long history of delays for the JWST. That's right, in true JWST fashion, the telescope launch was delayed yet again. It was only the day prior, on December 21st, that there was a news conference confirming that the observatory was ready for launch. Although the good news only lasted for a few hours, it wasn't long before NASA and its partners announced that the much-anticipated launch would be postponed yet again. Due to some high-altitude winds at the Guiana Space Center, its place of launch, the launch was pushed back to Saturday, December 25th, 2021. It's unclear if choosing Christmas Day was on purpose, but regardless, Santa came to deliver. Finally, on December 25th, 2021, at 7.20 Eastern, the JWST production came to an end, and its great mission began. After its launch, perhaps the most stressful 30 minutes of space communities' lives began. Play by play, the launch went as follows. 7.20 a.m. Launch At 7.26 a.m., the Range Operations Director confirms propulsion on the Ariane 5's core stage is normal. At 7.27 a.m., the Ariane 5 reaches an altitude of 225 kilometers. Simultaneously, the downrange distance is 1,024 kilometers. The first stage shutdown is targeted for plus 8 minutes 41 seconds. In addition, the trajectory and Vulcan 2 engine performance were reported normal. At 7.30 a.m., the main cryogenic stage's Vulcan engine was cut off, and the spent stage was separated. It falls back into the atmosphere into the Atlantic Ocean in the Gulf of Guyana, off the west coast of Africa. Then the upper stage's HM-7B engine began to fire to send the James Webb Space Telescope on a path towards its operating post a million miles from Earth. At 7.33 a.m., the Ariane 5 passes over the horizon from Kourou and is now out of range from the Galliot tracking station near the launch pad, but downrange stations continue receiving telemetry from the rocket. At 7.37 a.m., at this stage, the Ariane 5's current altitude is 177 kilometers and velocity is 8.2 kilometers per second. During this phase of the flight, the rocket is programmed to lose altitude, trade in height for velocity to accelerate the James Webb Space Telescope on the proper trajectory. In addition, 
The upper stage engine is about 8 minutes into a planned 16 minute burn. The propulsion system is reported to be performing as expected. At 7.41 am, this upper stage engine is about 8 minutes into a planned 16 minute burn. The propulsion system is reported to be performing as expected. In a minute, the upper stage engine will shut down and the second stage engine will begin to burn. At 7.45 am, the rocket's second stage engine shut down as scheduled. The upper stage is now maneuvering into the correct orientation for the deployment of the James Webb Space Telescope. At 7.55 am, the JWST has finally separated independent from the Ariane 5 rocket and begins to fly free in space. At 7.56 am, the JWST begins to extend its magnificent solo array, a moment that was captured by an onboard camera on the Ariane 5 rocket. It will be the last close-up glimpse of the observatory before it heads a million miles into space. At 8.05 am, the world begins to breathe easy and celebrations erupt from the launch pad at Kourou, French Guiana. With the celebration in full swing, the launch was dubbed a success. The JWST was officially out of our hands. Anything that was to happen from this point onward will solely be based on the JWST's mechanisms and design. With that being said, the JWST is not entirely in the clear yet. It still has a long journey ahead of it. Thankfully, the toughest part is behind us. Days to come After three days in space, Webb will begin to deploy one of its most intricate and prominent components, the Sun Shield. Arguably the most important part of the telescope, the Sun Shield will ensure that zero light pollution from the Sun or reflection of the Sun from Earth and its Moon reach the telescope and interfere with its infrared vision. A stack of five enormous kite-shaped sheets of polyamide film will block sunlight and heat from reaching the telescope's infrared sensors, which must remain at extremely low cryogenic temperatures to function properly. The sun shield is crucial for keeping the telescope sufficiently cold. In order to open it, 150 release mechanisms must fire off correctly over the course of three days. The complicated deployment involves 7,000 parts, including 400 pulleys, 8 motors, and 140 release actuators. If that doesn't seem stressful enough, keep in mind that we have zero ways of fixing anything that breaks. Webb is being launched 1.5 million kilometers, or about 1 million miles away from Earth, at a rough velocity of 1400 miles per hour, or 2,253 kilometers per hour. If something were to go wrong, we would be forced to sit back and watch. No pressure though. After the various steps of unfolding the sun shield, the telescope tower will begin to extend. In the following weeks, the primary mirror will also begin to unfold. Nothing about the deployment of Webb will be fast. Every little intricate moving part will take hours, if not days, to operate. Slow and steady is truly the way to go when it comes to such a large machine. Towards the end of the first month of the mission, there will be the last mid-course maneuver to insert Webb into its final destination at Lagrangian Point L2. Although, just because Webb reaches this point doesn't mean it's fully functional quite yet. It will take nearly six months of calibrating and fine-tuning for Webb to be at maximum efficiency. All the scientific instruments will be meticulously calibrated and their ability to track moving targets such as asteroids, comets, moons and planets in our solar system will be tested and established. After this six-month trial period, Webb will finally be able to begin its scientific mission and start to conduct routine science operations. A lucky few called Guaranteed Time Observers will get the first crack at using it without having to compete for observing time. These are the people who have spent years of their lives planning and building this new telescope. And so, it's only fair. What to keep an eye out for? I'm sure that everyone and their mother will be keeping a close eye on Webb. I mean, with 7,000 moving parts, there has to be something that gives, right? Well, with the amount of time and effort put into the Webb, everything that we had control of, we fixed. Every little nut and bolt, every little chip of paint, everything that we could control, we did. Now, the only things left to worry about 
other things we can't control. Things like solar winds and solar flares. The nature of man is to control what we can, but the nature of nature is to remain wild. The deep infinite of space is no different. There are things that we cannot see till it's right on top of us. And while I highly doubt an asteroid is going to destroy the JWST, solar wind or two may push it off course. For now, we keep our fingers crossed and wait patiently as Webb ushers us into a new era of space exploration.